Can you tell me, first of all, what passive building design is? So passive building design, you can kind of separate it into kind of two factions. There's passive house, which is a well-known um, accredited way of building, um, kind of a branded way of building, but there's just passive in the sense of not mechanical. So if you think of not having to rely on HVAC systems to heat and cool your home, that is what I mean when I speak about passive design. So passive design is really about working with nature from the onset of the design process. So something as simple as orientating your building in such a way that you can utilize natural wind patterns for wind flow and cooling and orientating it in such a way that you get good solar heat um, performance across the facade of the building. That is what I mean when I say passive. So it's not looking at the building and thinking, okay, how can I kit this out with as many sustainable elements as I can, but more about how can I design in a more holistic manner that is more attuned to nature. And how does that fit into the areas in which you design? So I work predominantly in the Caribbean, obviously. I'm from Barbados. Um, I do work within Barbados. I've done work within Dominica, St. Kitts. Um, and I do some work in South Florida as well. So when we speak about being contextual to the environment, we're pretty much talking about being able to withstand hurricanes. Um, there's tropical weather and just being comfortable and, you know, enjoying your living space. But there's also the need for shelter and safety and being able to, you know, quite frankly, survive to live another day. So it's quite, um, it's almost a paradox when you think about, okay, if there's very intense weather, I need to shore up myself and brace as much as possible. But traditionally, throughout the region, that's not what we've actually done. We've actually worked with, you know, the elements and, and compromised in some ways to allow the wind to pass through, to allow the weather to do what it does instead of trying to force against it. Because as much as we try, we, we can't compete with nature. So I'm picturing um, like a design that maybe doesn't even have windows, whereas in the U.S. a hurricane hits and we're all worried about getting hit with glass and shattering windows. But perhaps if there's no windows at all, you're saying that's a um, a way of working with the elements. Uh, we we have windows. Um, <laughs> a, a cool kind of anecdote or a typology that kind of developed over time after colonialism was like the chattel house in Barbados and different countries have their kind of traditional vernacular that stemmed from you know whatever troubled history we've communally gone through here in the Caribbean but originally these homes were meant to be very tiny lightweight easy to deconstruct and move because after the abolition of slavery um, people didn't have money they didn't have anywhere to stay but obviously that is, you know, quite a contentious environment to be living in. So if you had a problem with a former, you know, owner, you wanted to be able to call a couple of friends and move very quickly. So I think that typology was the initial tiny home. And out of that, people needed to find a way to make the building stronger while using, you know, collected materials. So what they did was actually design their openings to have horizontal louvers that could allow them to control the house they wanted to in the wind. So when things got really bad, they actually opened these apertures and allow the wind to flow through and you kind of sequester yourself to the extremities of the house. So essentially what they were doing was creating these tunnels of wind flow to break pressure against the side of the building. And over time, we realized that these buildings actually didn't shackle out, for lack of a better word. They weren't totally flattened and destroyed because we learned how to kind of temper against the wind. So that's kind of the principle and, and mentality that I've kind of integrated into my design approach. So we do have windows, but for example, they might have a um, more modern version of a slatted hurricane shutter where you're able to keep the wind and while well, you're able to keep the rain out and it's good for solar shading, but you can actually control natural wind flow through the building. So it's, it's a bit counterintuitive, but it's again, it's all about working with rather than against nature. So you said modern, but is it kind of a combination of both 
modern and very historical, the designs that you're doing? Definitely. I I say modern because it is almost an abstracted version of it. Um, you know, again, throughout the Caribbean, there is a kind of colonial aesthetic in the architectural design that we really want to move away from. So we've taken what I call like the first principles of designs, you know, is like a math formula, you know, there's certain principles that you know to be true, one plus one is two. Um, and you use that concept and build upon it to make a more elegant structure. It's quite similar. We've taken the things that we've observed and learned as performing better than others. And we've kind of course corrected and selected those and then modernized them and used that to shape um, a new Caribbean vernacular. You mentioned hurricanes. What other weather elements or climate elements are you designing to be resilient to? All. <laughs> um, <laughs> all. If you if you think about it, we're 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 a bunch of tiny islands. Barbados is only 166 square miles, 300,000 people, 14 miles in one direction, maybe 16 in the other. We're pretty much all coast. If you think about it, right? We're surrounded by water. We're at the mercy of hurricanes. We're on the edge of a tectonic plate. There's hurricanes. There's even storms cause significant damage. Um, flooding is a huge issue. Sea level rise. All of these repercussions of climate change are affecting us significantly. Even in June of 2021, we had um what I'd call a freak storm. It just came out of nowhere. It didn't look like a typical system and it caused a damage of over 2000 homes. And in a country of 300,000 people, even small numbers like that mean really big, really big loss. Part of my job as a designer is not just to say, oh, we should do this because I think it looks beautiful. Um, um, the, the science and the data comes in. If I can take a building and design it digitally in extended reality and project the the performance of the building under different um, weather systems or disaster scenarios, cost the building, analyze its carbon footprint, look towards the facilities management ongoing um, utility cost of the building. If I can pay my aesthetic design with numbers that make sense, people can't argue against that. So a lot of what I do is taking this indigenous vernacular and these approaches and modernizing them and digitizing them so that we can actually start to stress test and add real science of value to architectural design. And I'm guessing the fact that you grew up in Barbados and have experienced the hurricanes firsthand uh, growing up plays a huge role in your ability to make these designs, correct? Yeah, I funny story, I've always been terrified of them. Um, another fun fact is that Barbados's last hurricane, well, actually, we did have a category one that that quickly upgraded from a tropical storm to category one. But prior to that, it was would have been in 1955, I believe, a Hurricane Janet. But obviously, I work across the Caribbean as well. So I've been around when, you know, Maria was coming through um, the region. I've been, you know, in the North Caribbean while Dorian was sat over Bahamas for hours and hours and hours. And, you know, growing up, we have always been, you know, trepidatious. You get the hurricane warning, everyone rushes to the supermarket. I'm sure Floridians know this as well. You grab your batteries, your battery operated radios, and you bunker down and you hope for the best. And as a kid, you know, I remember, you know, duct taping up the windows. You're not supposed to do that, by the way. I <laughs> get yeah, proper hurricane shutters and, you know, putting buckets out in the living room and just watching the roof just flapping and just hoping it doesn't go or hoping a tree doesn't fall on your home. And that's not fun. And for me, you know, seeing people lose not just things but loved ones i feel such a sense of responsibility as a designer to see how we can just do better i don't want us to have to hope for the best anymore i want us to get to a point where we can design for the worst and take some of the guesswork out of you know what's next <laughs>